Welcome everyone to Be By Your Side Candid Conversations, where today our special guest will be Dr. Annette Austin. But first I would like to um, introduce myself. My name is Celeste Pinckney. I am the CEO of Be By Your Side Bereavement Concierge Service and is located in Baltimore, Maryland. I assist grievers as they transition through the maze of loss which includes fa their family affairs, personal grief coaching, and handling their family affairs, fun funeral arrangements, and setting up vend vendor assistance. And today, as I welcome Dr. Annette Austin to the platform, I would like everyone to just sit back and relax and enjoy our conversation. And Dr. Austin, I would like um, you to introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit about um, who you are. Okay, sure. Hi, Celeste. God bless you. Hello to each and everyone. My name is Dr. Annette Austin. I'm the CEO of Heavenly Treasures Care Services, where we help those that are family members that are sick or can't do anything for themselves, um, help them and 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 their in their situation, show them love, show them that someone is there to care for them. I know sometimes the family members is not around uh, per se because they have to work or they have other duties to attend to, but we the caregivers, you know what? We are there to help you. We are there to assist you and we are there to pay, help you with your loved ones to show them, hey, you got somebody, your, 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 your family member might not be here right now, but hey, I'm here. I'm part of your family. I'm here to love on you. I'm here to care for you. I'm here to hold you and to pray with you and to let you know that you're not by your, you are not alone. You're not by yourself because I am here to help or oh, my services is here to help you. <laughs> yes, I, I understand because I've been a caregiver since was a caregiver since 2012 until 2022. Okay. And oftentimes in this line of grief, and we do all, we really need caregivers to give us so much support and yeah. give us just a break so we can do our daily chores. Um, Dr. Annette, I would um like to ask you, what led you to create Heavenly Treasures? Well, Care services. Talk. Sure. Uh, well, let me t let you know. Um, I was like you. I'm a I'm a caregiver because my mother um, was diagnosed of dementia, mm -hmm. and my father, he was her caregiver at the time, but then he suddenly passed away, and then I had to step in. When I first stepped in, I did not have no clue or no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So as I proceed and I, I, I went to I read some books and I had some friends that helped me along the way, you know, and also with the help of the Lord, he, I was guided through this and my mother transitioned in 2018 and I could pat myself on the back for someone that was a novice came out A-OK. -okay. And while I was there taking care of her because of during the the, the resources of during the course of, um, um, of, of caring for her, there were some things that I needed and some things that I wasn't sure of. And I called up many different health agencies to help me. Some helped, some didn't help, some didn't, you know, they didn't have that kind of, of, of patience with me to know that, hey, I need help. My mother is sick. How can I go about to do this? How can I go about to do that? And I said, you know what? I need to form something <laughs> to build something to help others along the way. Because if it's hard for me, I know it was hard for, it's for, hard for someone else. So therefore, I want to come in and show my services with whatever area that they need help in, yes, I'm here to help. Yes, I'm here to provide. Yes, I'm here to do this. So that's how I became. Because of my mother's sickness, it drew me that, hey, if my mother's sick and she needs help, 
I'm here to help her. And I know someone else needs that same kind of help. So Heavenly yes. Presence was formed. Yes. It's, it's amazing how um, our, I'm not going to say our burdens, but our obstacles in life can turn out to be a can turn out to be a blessing. Amen. Because um, after my mother transitioned, I realized that it was the end of one life, but it was the beginning of another. Yes. It was, it was just like you said, it was so hard. Even though I had my father's help, he was like elderly too. So I, you know, I had while I was working, he was helping to take care of her. But when you come home and you have to cook, wash, and my mother had um, a disease developed a disease called alphasia and it's something like dementia and Alzheimer's and then on top of that she um, developed cervical cancer mm. so as time went on she couldn't do anything for herself yeah <laughs> so it was like I really needed that extra care yes and we would sometimes we would get into a little argument because I would be like we need more help Yes. And he's like, no, no, because sometimes I guess we don't think about it. Um, families might not oftentimes have the finances mm -hmm. for the extra help. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can concur with that as well, because um, with the help with, with, with my mom, because I came to a point that my mother couldn't do anything for herself. And mm -hmm. um, she was dependent on whoever was around her. And she couldn't walk. She couldn't talk to a time that she couldn't speak anymore. Um, she couldn't walk. She could totally couldn't do anything for herself. And it was like within the three years um, when after my, the passing of my dad, that the sickness that came very quickly upon her. So um, to see my mom there, there, she needed 24 seven help. Yes. You know, she needed the 27 service help. And God had blessed me enough that I had a caregiver that when I have to go off to work or when I have to take care of my younger son, she was there to help me. I mean, I had um, other individuals in my home to help as well, but they did their part. But you know, as a, a, a female, you know, because yes. I have male in my home. As a female, we know the intensity for what other females need. So, you know, the male, they can only do certain things, but they can't, mm -hmm. they can't do other things, if you understand what I'm saying. Oh, so, I therefore, understand. I had to step in as, as, as the male figure or, or as her daughter to say, hey, this is what I have to do. I have to do it. Do and it. Plus, yes. the, the, the caregiver that I had, she was there to assist me because she went to the different classes. She had experience. She was a professional. So therefore, um, she showed me certain things to do, how to clean her, uh, how to clean up my mother while in bed, um, if, how to bathe her, how to feed her, everything, how to do everything for her in bed. And because of that, I became who I am today, <laughs> a caregiver by yes. service. Yeah, and I, I, I know how that is, especially when you can't find the resources. And that was one of the, my problems too, because all the resources had to lay on me, okay? I couldn't get no help nowhere from no city, no state, no country, nothing. <laughs> so all the resources came from me and, and, and thank God, you know, God provided for her to work a certain time and she retired. So, so she had a little something holding. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the combination with mine and hers combined and, and, and see her through because she couldn't get no help. And that's one of the reasons as well. If I could find more resources. Yes. Okay. To help, especially with, I live in the New York City state in New York City state. So therefore, if New York City can can uh deny my mom because she has a house, because she has this kind of bank account, yes. imagine, I mean, imagine how others feel that don't have anything and they still can get 
help from the city or the state. It's really hurtful. Why do this? Why, why, why do they feel like you know they have to have a hold over the elderly or those that are disabled? It's not fair to us. Yeah, so it, it's, I'm trying it's to not. fight. <laughs> I'm trying to fight to find out how what else resources is out there for those that are low income, middle income, high income, whatever kind of income you have. Because when you got to take care of your own personal family and also with a sick one, all of your resource diminishes. Okay? It does diminishes. And I've been there. And I know what I'm talking about. So if I could find a way to help, and if I could find a way to um, get the city or the state to set, knock on their door and say, hey, I want someone to listen to me, I, can, I will do that. Yes. So I, we got to come together and do this together. Amen. I, I agree because even um, for myself, I've had um, like six major surgeries wow. and your being sick can wipe you out yes. financially it, because of the time you may not have for work and different things. And, and even, you know, I understand with retirement because for my mother, um, we were blessed that three of us could split mm -hmm. um, and Good get work. like a caregiver in the morning when I was at work. And then as she got worse, a caregiver in the evening, just for a couple yeah. hours yeah. to give us a little bit of relief. But, yeah. you know, it, it wasn't enough. It's when never it, enough. It's never because there's enough. sometimes I had to sacrifice my time to take yes. care of my mom. Okay, mm -hmm. I work on, um, uh, prior to that, my son was very young. He was approximately like 10, 11 years old. So I had to take care of a young child wow. in between taking care of my mama. Wow. So it came a time that my priorities for my child changed to the point that he had to come to me and say, you're not looking after me anymore, you know? And mm -hmm. it was hurtful because there's some things now that I can't do with him, even though I try to split my myself in half. Mommy needs me. Mm -hmm. My child needs me. My church needs me. My, my job needs me. How can I split myself in all these different places when I need to be dedicated to this one person? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, I, I understand. <laughs> and, and that makes us um, like lose ourselves. So um, that brings me to the next question. Um, after the, um, during the time of your mother's illness, um, did you do any self-care like maybe daily weekly or monthly yes i had to do my self-care and you know what i had to do i had to exercise between the period of of 2017 to sorry between the period of 2016 to 2018 i had to put and invest within with investing myself and how i invested in myself i had to go uh, uh, I hire a trainer to train me in exercising and uh, workout procedures, you know, the whole nine yards, trust me. <laughs> and that was my time of, of self-care. Also, I took vacations because I'm, um, I'm an island girl. I'm from the, oh. from the island from, of Barbados. So every six months, I would go away within the year, every six months. I would go away, uh, do an R&R &R for myself. And there were times I would take my mother with me, but then I would have a caregiver down there to take care of her while I go to the beach, while I go Ooh, shopping, yes. and while I do my little thing, because I needed that. Because if I didn't do that, sweetheart, I would not be, I would not be here today. <laughs> so I would invite anyone to take time out for themselves do you if it's for four hours go to the spa get your nails done get your hair done you need that breather because yes. if you don't get that breather you will be no good for yourself or for the person that you're taking care of so you need time out for yourself I, my time out was a week someone someone would say Annette, that's too long no it's not I have to take care of myself because if I don't take care of myself, who's going to take care of me? 
Yes. Okay. I'm looking after my mama. Yes. If I don't take care of myself, I can't look after her. So I had to step out of my way a little bit. Not to say that, you know, I'm neglecting her because I would set up people in place. I make sure I set up people in place. Hey, you do mm -hmm. this, you got to do that. You do this, you got to do that before I disappear. And when I disappear, I don't feel no guilt. I don't feel no headaches because I know my mama is in good hands. So that's why I did what I had to do, you know? Mm -hmm. So yes, self-care is very, very, very important. <laughs> it, it is. And um, I didn't find out till after... I became sick. And if I could do, if I had to do it all over again, which I end up having to do it all over again for my father, I, this time I did take some self-care, but probably not as much as I could because of lack of health. But it's so important. Yes, so it very important. And um, my last question I would like to ask you, during your mother's um, illness, did you feel the need to be alone or did you feel more so you need, like you need a community or both? Well, to tell the truth, yes, there were times I felt like I had to be alone, but I couldn't press myself to be alone all the time. I need people around me. I need people around me to build me up, encourage mm -hmm. me, and to push me to do the best I can, because we all need encouragement. Yes. We all do need that kind of encouragement. Even if it's, it's a pat on the back and say, you're doing a good job, keep mm, up the good yes. work. That was much more important to me than being by myself. Yes, I would be by myself at times, but it will bring you into a depression mode. I, I didn't want to be depressed. I didn't want to be a depressed around my mama because when someone is sick, they could pick up your spirit. Mm -hmm. So I always have to be in a joyful mode because I didn't want my mother to be, be depressed. I didn't want her to be sad. And I didn't want, because there was a, a special gift with my mother. She will always have a smile on her face. I, I didn't want that to disappear. You understand? So yeah. I always used to come into her room with my jolly self. Hi, mommy. How you doing today? I'm so glad to see you. And you know what? That smile will come up on her face. Mm -hmm. And when I see that smile come up on my face, it makes me put a smile on my face too. So I know that she was happy. So I couldn't keep myself um, in, into a, a, in a in a position or a place of depression or downness. Okay, mm -hmm. if I want to be alone, you know where I'll be alone when I go to bed at night. That's when I'll be alone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So therefore, what I have to do, I had to um, build my community up with positive people. I couldn't deal with negative negativity so and I had to let that go going forth. So you know what? Hey, if you can um, uh, bring me life, thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for being in my corner. Thank you for encouraging me. Thank you for being my need because we do need somebody. Regardless of what anyone say, yes, we do need somebody. Yes. And yes, you are my friend. Yes, everybody needs someone. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Annette Austin. And um, before we close, do you have any questions that you would like to um, ask me? Yes, I would like to ask you a, 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 just a couple of questions. Um, uh, one of the questions I want to ask, while you were taking care of your dad, okay, while you were taking care of your dad, um, what did you go through? What thorn... Um, what was your thorn? There's a, always a thorn in the flesh. There was always something to, to stop you or to, to make you feel a certain way. What was that thorn and how did you overcome that? My, my thorn was, I always felt like I was stuck mm. because I know I wanted to like get married again, date. I felt like I didn't have a life from caregiving since 2012 to mm -hmm. 2022. Um, yes, and I know that's a long oftentimes time. Oftentimes I would, I would feel stuck and, I would, and anger started creeping up and, and bitterness because I felt like, I felt like, you know, other two other family members could 
help me help mm -hmm. better. And I and they knew, you know, what it took for my mother. So why not, you know, come in and help me with my father? But it took a lot of prayer. And yeah. then it just took a lot of carriage within myself. Like mm -hmm. since my mother died, I've been like on a journey of self-care and building myself back up to just learn how to love me. And, and so I really had to like change my mindset. Mm, yeah, That's so important mind. that you have to change your mindset. And I had to change my mindset and realize that God gives each and every one of us different assignments. Yeah. So I was like, everybody can't handle the assignment. So that's how I overcame that all the bitterness and feeling stuff. Okay. Well, another thing, what are you doing now that would encourage others that have been through what you are doing that had that you have been through? What are you doing now to encourage others that there's there's a way? Well, to encourage others, I just want them to know that just because it's the end of one life, it can cre it it creates another life in you. Mm -hmm. It's because we all are gonna die at some time. Yeah. So I just try to maybe set certain boundaries now and just teach people how important it is to have family, more in family in, involved with, yes. with the help of a sick loved one. And, yes. just, and just taking better care of yourself. Yes. It, even if you need to go to counseling or you need to be in a support group, it, it just really helps you to overcome yes. what you may be feeling. Or just help you bear it because you know you never are gonna you never are gonna forget you know about how you saw your mother dying or your father dying but it's just the transitioning of learning how to um how to carry it yes how to carry it with ease one of the things that I remember I remember one day after I finished um, taking care of my mom, you know, we were sitting watching mm -hmm. television and she loved to watch television. Mm -hmm. Even if she know what she's watching, but she loved watching television. But however, um, I remember this specific day while I was there sitting with her, because I love to sit with her to let her know that, yay, I ain't going nowhere, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I could sense that she wanted to say something. And I said, mommy, did you want to say something? She went shake her head. I said, you do? I said, what do you want to tell me? She told me, and I'm going to let you know this as well. She said, said to me, and these were the last words she ever said to me before she, she was completely um, muted from speaking ever again. Mm -hmm. She said, continue to prayer. Yes. One of the things she said, prayer. She said, don't stop praying. And one of the things that encouraged my heart as well is to say, God will take care of you. So I want to impart that message to you, Celeste, that regardless of what you're going through, how you might be feeling, continue the prayer. Because you know why? God is taking care of you. And he's not going to stop taking care of you because he's guiding you. He's there to help you. He's seeing you through. So even when you don't feel like you have someone by your side, guess what? God is on your side, my dear. Yes. And when he's on the, your side, that is the best thing to ever have in your life. Because he's there to see you through. He's there to uplift your spirit. And he's there to guide you. And that's what I want to leave with you. Just remember, continue to pray. When, when all seems lost, when all seems down, it's like you can't see your way through. God is there to take care of you. God bless you. Yes. yes, he is. Thank you, Dr. Annette Austin, for this awesome yes. interview.
God bless you. I thank you so much, Celeste. I pray and I encourage you to continue doing what you're doing. And, you know, we all go through grief. We go through moments of, of despair. Our, our emotion gets the best of us. And one thing in my um, loss I have encountered is to talk about it. When I talk about it, it, it makes it better. Yes, when I it talk does. about it. It makes me to overcome the length of time that I don't want to put myself in a depression mode. I don't want to put myself in a down mode. I got to talk about it as long as it takes me to get over that grief moment. I'm going to talk about it because it, it's going to help me, you know, yes. and that's what I have been doing. <laughs> yes, because in grief is um, it doesn't have a set time. No, it does not. It, it, it can come and it can go. And, and it can come back. Through. So yes. you just have to learn how to um, go through it, work your way through it. And how, and to, it, how to carry it. How to carry it, what you can't fix. You just have yes. to go through it. I, I totally agree. And because of grief, you know, everyone goes through it differently. As I was speaking to a sister today, everyone yes. goes through grief differently. And we don't know what point of that grief it would take you. But one of the things we have understand, you got to uh, uh, surround yourself with positive people, talk about it, do the self-care and, 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 you know, accept that hey, this is, yes, that person is no longer with me. I've got to go forward. I can't stay in this place. I've got to move forward. And and during the process, things will get easier. Things will yes, get easier. It, 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 def it definitely, definitely will. Yes. Yeah, so you continue um, on your journey of caregiving and yes. continue to be a blessing to those who I need. Yeah, and thank you, everyone, for uh, thank you, everyone, for being here today for Be By Your Side Candid Conversations. I'm looking forward to. Greetings, everyone. Hi, my name is Chandra Nicole Gore, and I am a Lens of Faith. I'm the CEO and founder of Lens of Faith Speaks Coaching and Consulting, and I'm also the founder and the president of Focus and Align Women's Business Empowerment Foundation Incorporated. Welcome. Welcome to the journey to greatness. Yes, that's right. The women inside of the Women's Business Empowerment Foundation Incorporated are all focused and aligned on God first as they navigate their various businesses that God has allowed them to be the CEOs over. I want to challenge you today to join us now. That's right. I want you to join this magnificent journey of learning all about women in business how we start from the bottom, but now we are arising, arising for such a time as this, learning valuable tools, resources, and avenues, strategies, tactics, and basic skills that we all need to thrive as CEOs of the businesses that God has given us. Yes, I want to thank you for even tuning into this very video today. As the founder, as the CEO, I want to tell you this. This has not been easy. But you know what? God has been with me every step of the way. So I want you to know today that if you join this movement of women in business, you will succeed in whatever it is that God has allowed you to put your hands on. Because our hands shall never lack. I decree and declare today that you are daily loaded with benefits. That's right. If you partner with us and join this amazing movement, you will have the opportunity to mount the stage and talk about your business. You will have the opportunity to learn simple techniques, tools, and strategies to build your business from the ground up. That's right. We want to work with you. We want to band together so that the tools that you may have, what you've been doing, 
will get you to where God needs you to be. So listen, do not delay. Come on, join this amazing, amazing opportunity today. God bless each and every one of you. Have a great rest of your day.